good timing. So uh, I'm going to play a little bit of this, a, a couple things here. Um, okay, uh, let's let's start. So uh, these these are arm wrestling uh, legends here, like top tier uh, goats, and uh, they kind of got into a little conversation about. Uh, The virus and, and uh, what they're saying like projection wise so I wanted to share that because I do feel like that's an important I don't know at least thing to uh, entertain right now at the very least is that um, I, I don't know, like, anywhere you go, you, you're either going to get, you know, one extreme or the other on the polarities, like, uh, um, oh my god, it's going to get so much fucking worse, you have no idea, just wait, just wait, just you wait, or, oh no, like, this is, like, this is going to be beautiful, and, uh, like, this is as bad as it's going to get, and it's just going to get better from now, which, both, both sides, is, I mean, anytime... You you entertain the uh, extremes within the polarities. You're going to be caught in a loop program and in, in a trap that has been set up for you. Because once you do that and you side a certain way, uh, it, it's it's fucking uh, balance here, people. This is a balancing act. So whenever you side one way or the other. You are very easily manipulated, and the power of suggestion comes into play big time. You are very easy to uh, dictate and predict how you're going to react and respond. So I'm, I'm going to share this here, and then I'm going to share a little bit of... Uh, What's her name? Dana Ashley, I think, <laughs> is her name. Which, which, so I'm going to go into, uh, you know, the mentality of people right now that, um, there is this, uh, level of awareness that, that knows that this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg a little bit. It's more than just the tip, but, like, just, just the feeling that, yeah, it's, it's, we're going all in here. And, uh, so that, that's what I'm going to share with this. And then with Dana Ashley, it's like, you know, I'm going to share that, you know, it, it's been a setup for a long time. Uh, she shows 10 years back from the documentation that she has, but really it's, uh, yeah, I, I can't get too deep. Otherwise it's going to offset things, uh, make things, things seem too unreal. With, with certain talk, I, I have to have the right setup before I can um, go go that deep. So uh, then I'm I am going to read from a book. Uh, I'm going to read quite a bit. So if you're not into that and and listening to people reading things, uh, I understand. I understand. Um, But, yeah, this, this is what I'm going to be reading from. And it's basically going to, uh, I, I've been very wary to uh, share this, um, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it because uh, things have been getting fucking ridiculous. So I'm gonna share this. I'm not gonna say that I know uh, the timeline of this. If this is gonna happen soon or if this is gonna happen, you know, in a hundred years, I don't. I don't fucking know necessarily. But 
that's the thing with, with, with the fucking timelines and how they collapse in upon themselves. Uh, and we, we create them whenever the, ha the happenings line up so that, uh, you know, these things manifest. So uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of levels to this uh, 5D chessboard that, that, that is being played upon. So yeah, this could potentially happen soon. This could potentially happen. Uh, after different things roll out. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I hope this happens really soon. It's interesting because I feel it. Like I feel, I feel the little ones like waking up. So, but, mm, I'll talk. I'll talk about that like once once we get into there. But first, we're gonna get into these videos, and then we'll get into the uh, uh, the uh, the next gen, as in the the generation of the young ones that. Ah, like please, like get out of your uh, get out of your mentality of like uh, indigo or crystalline. Like this is not. This is a level of remembrance, and it has everything to do with the uh, felt experience. So, the more gnosis integrated, the more that goes into the next uh, generation, created and procreated and co-created. And then the the collective the collective always goes into the next generation. So uh, there's always a flowering process happening, an expansion of an expansion from what was into something uh, grander. So. The people, and especially some children that you're going to become um, aware of and in communion with, they're going to be on a whole different fucking level of communication. And yes, uh, it's going to transform your mentality of language, which, which is what dictates the mentality, and thus that dictates dictates through the reality I mean they say it's going to be a two year pandemic yeah no that's that's what I see <laughs> yeah that's scary stuff in it but I mean they can't stop the world for two years can they I don't think it's going to take that long we're already flattening the curve in a lot of places. I, I feel yeah, like a lot of people. So right there, like, you know the mentality, um, at least on this subject that you're working with, the uh, programming and uh, projecting into uh, individuals' mentality that dictates the collective's reality. <sighs> yeah, that they they want a long term. They uh, who is they right? Who 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 is uh, in guard of the gates and the windows? So, uh, a timeline thing about, you know, how long this is going to last is kind of not the fucking point. A lot of this stuff it, it, that I'm going to show here, it, it's not the fucking point. The point is to get down to the uh, roots, the, the true causalities of why these things are stimming in the first place. 
So whenever you hear someone talking about uh, flattening the curve, and I fucking love uh, Devin Lorette, like that's that's one of my most uh, favorite Canadians <laughs> that I know. But whenever someone's talking about flattening the curve, they they are uh, completely brainwashed and uh, led to believe. And I mean, it's gonna be more difficult, you know, for some. For most, if you have children or, or and whatnot, but uh, in a family, but uh, you gotta realize that you're working with, um, and and this guy's gonna fucking come out and be like, hey, do you guys think it's fucking man-made or what, or natural or what? And and this is the point here because it's a natural thing that occurs. Like, in the fucking body, but what's man-made about it is the reaction, the, the the testing, the process of it. So that it creates a narrative, a certain spin on it, and that can be taken to the nth degree. And then we can easily have the powers that be and the constructs, the... The hierarchy and how it trickles down. This is a trickle down effect happening. So uh, um, certain people are told, "Hey, uh, we we respond this way," and then just fucking every everyone just fucking. Oh my god, we have to. Otherwise, you know, we we don't. We're coming off as we don't care or irresponsible or uh, you know that we're being uh, immature about this situation. Oh my gosh. If we choose to think for ourselves, then, then we're not being safe. We're just, we're, we're not being safe about it. <clears throat> so this is a bit, this is like uh, the wake-up call, that, you know, um, in our lifetime that we've been waiting for, that... Uh, and a lot of us, you know, we knew this this period was going to happen at least um, on a certain level, because once you tap into certain densities and dimensions of reality, like you recognize that you know things were supposed to happen, things didn't quite happen the way they were supposed to happen, and then you know uh, where that leads to. So that leads to uh, this play that that we're currently going through. And uh, a lot of us, and I know this because I feel this deep and deep down, like a lot of us feel that this is not, th how this is happening is not how it was supposed to happen. Like it, it was supposed to be a lot more authoritative and direct and immediate. So the, uh, the uh, delay and stall, and and in in some of the p key pieces of this of this fucking puzzle is why this has uh, been allowed to extend. So uh, th this also leads me to believe that this is the window. that uh has been granted upon uh these powers they uh, their window was extended is, is what i mean to say and this is going to be coming from uh this this, this same source i'm not going to be reading that this time but uh essentially this this is the uh thought program that, that infested their program is that it stalled a certain thing and in so doing so it extended their reach in, in their play for for a time but also in doing so that woke enough people up to what's going on that uh that tipped the, you know, the sides. 
it tipped the scales enough so that people will start to wake up to what is fucking real, which it's not it's not a fucking secret, people. It's not a big fucking deal. You fucking go outside in nature by yourself. You shut the fuck up. You you learn how to control your goddamn mind and your thoughts so that you can be quiet in nature and feel. That that's the fucking secret, okay? Go out and do that and then you don't know, learn from nature. And uh you're gonna be led to things that remind you of the truth inside of you. Get out of the fucking city. Get out of your fucking towns. And go out in nature. Spend time in nature. <clears throat> if you can. Ha have a plot of land. Or some. some Localized area. To where you can grow your own garden. And start to connect with. The earth and the growth patterns and the process that is happening and and the communion that is happening with the plants that you are growing and how that is your medicine as well it not only heals and feeds the body but most importantly it feeds the soul the spirit So this is the big thing here, like, uh, with, with all this catastrophe and, and craziness going on, it's going to allow enough people, it's going to allow enough time for people to wake up to what is real and get back to their natural feelings, which is just in tune with nature. So people are going, are, are going to start to, more people are going to start to commune with plants and gardens in the natural world. And right now, I, I've, I've noticed that uh, because of uh, like the worldwide quarantine or whatever, uh, Mother Nature responds in kind because uh, once once people disengage from the natural world, from that direct communion with with Mother Earth, uh, she she's going to respond, and so that response is, "What the fuck are you doing, people?" We, the Earth needs. The awareness of the people in order to bring forth a certain ecosystem, and without that, it, it's it's there's not going to be a earth, you know. And yes, you may think that you know, oh, Mother Earth is you know is strong enough that she doesn't need no. Like you, you need to understand, understand uh, origin. And creation, but that that comes, you know, that that will come in time. Whenever you are ready to to have those feelings, to harbor certain feelings inside of you, but not hold on to them, to to feel them and, and to release them, because this is a flow process happening here. We're not meant to hold on to anything. We're or meant to see things for as they are and release them. Okay, I've babbled on for long enough. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, I'll come back. But I, I feel like it's just gonna be like you can't stop it. You can't stop it. Right. Well, that's, yeah, that's that's. Yeah, are they are they waiting for it to mutate to something that's not dangerous anymore? I don't understand, really even understand the philosophy of doing this because you would think if it started with two people or one person, it's gonna eventually take. Exactly. How many years versus the I think the idea is to study it doesn't overwhelm um, overwhelm. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the thing is, we, we were talking about it the other day, Devin, just on the phone. The Spanish flu. The yeah. second um the second years wave. Ago. Yeah, uh, nineteen eighteen. And the second wave of the Spanish flu 
was much more dangerous than the first. Which is reporting it. So that's mainly what I wanted to share with this uh, video here is that because I mean the Spanish flu keeps coming up from in my mentality and reality in, in a lot of ways and uh, also the mentality of you know it's going to come back stronger so I mean this was kind of like you know just I wanted to share this. Not to try to convince anyone of anything, always do your own research and dive into things as you are led led into them and how you weave and uh, what you believe is up to you if you want to choose to believe something. Uh, but this is also going to bring me into uh, what I watched with uh, Nako Bear. Uh, he's been doing some awesome video, uh, one-on-ones, I guess you could say, with, uh, different people. Uh, and the last one that I watched was with, uh, Teal Swan, and I haven't watched much of Teal Swan for a while. I did for a time, then I kind of got out of, uh, you know, vibing with that. And even watching, uh, that video, I, I I don't know. There, there's just so many, so many things happening all at once. So it's it's hard to uh, peer past people's uh, perceptions and and see what is really happening. But uh, one of the things. There's, that she says is that, you know, she she had to, I don't want to necessarily say boast about, but I will say that, you know, this is something that she has in common with David Wilcock, which is that they like to frequently mention that they, they go out of body. As she said, as you know, I go out of body. So, so, uh, so she was saying how she sees the, the collective and like kind of like our uh, immediate future, I guess you could say, uh, timeline. And uh, she got very upset with 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 what's about to happen. Uh, very distraught. But then you know she saw what potentially could happen from that. But essentially, what she saw is uh, basically the fucking Bill Gates or who or who, whoever the fuck plan is to uh, digitalize everything, get everyone with a uh, virtual ID, and to have everything, uh, the monetary system. structured in a way so that everyone's uh, monitored in, in almost every situation that you do just to further the control structure and the the reality that she saw is the reality that they have created and that's that's kind of like their uh, reality looming over all of this right now that's that's seems to be that that's going to happen but there are things happening that are inexplicable, unexplainable to even the people that can peer, you know, that can go out of body. And I don't recommend listening to David Wilcock. I don't necessarily recommend listening to Teal Swan unless you're drawn to. Go with what you're drawn towards. Listen to your own inner compass more than what anyone else has to say. Always. Always do that. Because even if, you, even if you're listening to someone that you don't agree with what they say, you have a uh, this, this feeling that, Ugh, fuck, I, I don't vibe with you. Still, if you have this inner urge that, for whatever reason, I need to listen to these, this, this person at this time, 
for whatever reason. I don't know why. And then you keep doing it, and then boom. You, you, you'll get that little piece, the little nugget that, that you need to hear that, that will sync something up that, that would be like a little piece of, a, of the puzzle for you. So, uh, go with what you feel, because you, you never know what you're going to find if you continue down the path of uh, your inner landscape. So always listen to that. Always cultivate that kind of awareness. Because we have all this, all this unlimited outer entertainment and outer sources of you know knowledge and exploration but all of it's meaningless unless you fine tune your inner compass because otherwise it's just entertainment and it's just entrainment very sober in thought well, that's probably going to happen again. It's, it's just, is it this time? Or, I mean, it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that this will naturally happen or something, someone behind it or something? A fucking dude right here. You think I think this is natural or, you know, someone, someone, something behind it? No, no, some part of it. Natural. No. natural, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just a mystery. I mean, it, 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 for <clears throat> how can you think anything about this is natural? It's an unnatural response to something that that is that is natural. So I mean, it's both. So it's and that's the thing here. Like what I'm always saying is that it's always and. It's not necessarily you know this or that. It's this and that. It's both, but it's just what side, what kind of perspective are you choosing to look at? <clears throat> the downside of arm wrestling is arm, and arm wrestling gatherings, in some respects, it couldn't be a great deal worse from sort of, you, you know, you, you, you have mass gatherings of people when you're in an extremely close proximity, breathing all over each other, gripping at hands. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that just goes down to all the all the local level, especially like if this this is uh, the the pandemic here is the crush um, any kind of uh, localized gatherings or organizations or you know mom pa uh, businesses and and then this guy here is like to bring him on like. I'll arm wrestle the COVID, like, come on with it. I don't care if they got it or not. And I mean, all that I can really do right now is just kind of uh, poke fun at stuff and, uh, you know, test and see where people are at and just kind of uh, make fun of it. But also, I j you just got to work with the, the mentality of the people around you, so... You know, if someone's uh, in a fear state, then you kind of have to uh, play around that a little bit. Yeah, you can blast them wide open, but, you know, then you run the risk of uh, you know, people going towards the other side in the polarity of uh, disgust or, you know, not, not wanting to try to understand where you're coming from at all and just back into fear hardcore essentially so uh it's just kind of easing people out of the fucking fear programs right now is, is where we're at okay so let me see if i can find this next one miss dana ashley right has a very sweet voice. I don't necessarily always like listening 
to her as well as uh, Richie from Boston. I don't necessarily always uh, like like watching them. Openly. One. Oh, stop it. But uh, right now, they're, they're both putting out a lot of good uh, information about, you know, stuff that's happening uh, immediately. And yes, with Rich, Richie from Boston, you know, you have to realize whenever, you know, you have your Alex Jones type characters, which, you know, I think Alex Jones is fucking awesome and hilarious. As well as Donald Trump. That guy always cracks my fucking shit up. But you gotta realize where they're coming from. Uh, uh, the type of mentalities that's happening. Take from them what you can. Take, take what you can from everything. And leave the bullshit. Leave what doesn't resonate with you. Because uh, that doesn't matter in, in the moment. Maybe uh, potentially later on. Like it, it will, but... Let me see if I can remember. Here we go. Says, Hence, but do not be deceived. Remember... This was released in 2010. Here are some excerpts. On the subtitle to the whole lockstep scenario that they describe says, a world of tighter, top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership. Hmm, how does my compilation back that up so far? With limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. So, I mean, yeah, we're witnessing that right now with, you know, people protesting uh, this lockdown and quarantine bullshit. Uh, th this, this is like a, something that, that was made by, I think, the Rockefeller Foundation, which is just scenarios with the government and uh, society and control structures that, that could uh, be at play. And Lockstep was one of them. There was four of them. Uh, at least... Two other ones I, I see definitely being at play here because we're going into this this digital realm pretty hardcore. I'm not saying that we are going to actually land there. I'm just saying that like, this is the push. And, and Bill Gates is, is just someone. He, he's just a fucking person that, you know, uh got his hands on enough money and enough power that he was uh, given the opportunity to see uh, deeper levels of influence and power. And then uh, once you see that, you're like, well, are you going to play ball or, you know, what are you going to do? So, uh, I, I don't blame Bill for playing ball. Ball. Uh, crystal, crystal ball. Because, I mean, at that level, once you reach that kind of level, uh, you, especially when it, whenever you don't know the, the occulted and esoteric world that you live in, uh, if, if you don't play ball, then you're done. So... Uh, so self-preservation, you know, as well. So I understand that bill. I get that. Uh, but, like, you, man, like, your soul is going to be tormented for, for quite, a, quite a long time because uh, of the degradation and corruption that, that you have agreed, agreed to take part in and kind of spearhead he's kind of like uh the neil degrasse tyson of scientism that's basically what bill gates is to uh, uh technology and now you know vaccine and population control so uh if if you're gonna have any kind of feelings towards bill gates let that be feelings of sympathy and sorrow and uh, 
potentially hope that, you know, uh, he finds a path that, that uh, doesn't torment his soul for, for longer than what is already going to be. So, I mean, uh, this is the thing, you know. And I'm not, and this isn't saying that Bill Gates knows what the fuck's going on. No, he, he is just, he has been tricked into believing something. Like, like, like most everyone fucking has. Being tricked into believing a narrative. So he has been tricked into believing that, you know, there's overpopulation. That we need population control. We need more control. We need we need the vaccines. We need to do these we need to do these false flag uh, events to get people cold and grouped up and scared so that we can uh, manipulate them easier in the pockets and uh, groups of people's in awarenesses so that we can manipulate them easier. So understand that they know that the citizen pushback is what they will be instigating. They're very well aware of that. Remember, this was written in 2010. It says, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years finally hit. Unlike 2009's H1N1, it was extremely virulent and deadly. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. Now remember, why is it having an economic impact? Why? It's from the virus itself that we now know is on par with the seasonal influenza? Or is it because of the rules that very organization has imposed as a result of what they said needed to happen? It's a very important point. It says it had a deadly impact on economies. This is what they wanted. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, debilitating industries like tourism. Breaking global supply chains. Food supply chains, anyone, perhaps? Even locally, normally bustling shops and office buildings set empty for months devoid of both employees and customers. It blanketed the planet, they say. Even in developed countries, containment was a challenge, right? That's how they want to portray it in the media that they also control. However, a few countries did far better. China, in particular, the Chinese government, quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders, save millions of lives, they say, stopping the spread of the virus far earlier than in other countries. It says China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect the citizens from risk and exposure during the pandemic. National leaders around the world flexed their authority. And, and that's something that's very funny because uh, you know, a lot of people... Once this for starters, like, what the fuck's going on? Like, are, are these fuckers just flexing on us? And then, hey, 2010, this was written, like, flex. Flex Luther. Imposed airtight rules and restrictions from the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Are we seeing this? Yeah, absolutely. Even after the pandemic faded, y'all, listen to this. This more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. Leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Again, this is what they want to see happen. At first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. Mm -hmm. Right here in America, I would agree. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy, even eager. I mean, right now, obviously, we're seeing, you know, uh, them betraying, uh, you know, snitches get riches, right? Like, it's... It's uh, all happening uh, very quickly, but also, you know, oh, we're, we're flattening that curve. <laughs> they don't tell you, they don't really tell you which curve. <laughs> I'll, I'll get into that. 
for top-down direction and oversight, and national leaders had more latitude to impose order in the ways they saw fit. In developed countries, this heightened oversight took many forms. Biometric ID for all citizens, for example, and tighter regulation of key industries. Keep your eye on the food, guys, because that's the one they really want to take down, in my opinion. Tighter regulation of key industries was deemed vital for national interests. Enforced cooperation with the suite of new regulations and agreements slowly but steadily restored both order and, importantly, economic growth. Yeah, so, uh, no, I, I disagree. It's not the food and and. That has been uh, pushed a little bit, you know, with a little bit of the fear programming. But, uh, you know, I, I have several videos where I show you, uh, you, you can easily go out in nature and get all the food that, that you need and more. There's an abundance of food. Always at all times, realize there is an abundance of food. Always. No matter where you are at, you can go out into a fucking forested area and have unlimited food the only thing that you have to break down into barriers in the mentality that you have uh seated inside of your mentality uh, inside of your fucking brain that that limits you from realizing what is actually there at your disposal at your you know grasp right there for you all provided for you naturally so this is just like another tightening layer of uh, control uh, manipulation that you cannot go out and find the solution and the answer and the medicine and the panacea for yourself But really, it's not the food; it's the water that they want control over, and that's a whole other thing. Like, it's another layer of mentality and retardation. It's like, oh my God, it's the same level and on par with making it illegal to collect rainwater. That's essentially they want to charge you for every little thing that they can. All right, so, uh, oh, man, that's interesting. So I'm going to read some from this. This is going to go into, uh, you know, some of the craziness. Uh, you know, a lot of us didn't expect that things were going to get this fucking crazy, but a lot of us didn't, didn't really know, uh, the, the setup until now. So I'm going to share this and say that. Like the unexpected craziness that, that we're experiencing. Expect the unexpected with the magic. Uh, <laughs> the mystery that can... Uh, potentially become a uh, very real reality very quickly. I've been saying to some people, oh, just just wait until it goes nuclear. And that whole thing, you know, is, is that even real? But uh, the fear is very real, if you haven't realized it. <laughs> the fear of porn, the fear of virus. And that's going to be, that that is what is going to keep escalating, the fear virus, until it reaches a point. And, and we're going to go right back to where, you know, history repeats itself, the Cold War. It's going to be Russia. It's going to be, it's going to be nuclear. And when that happens, pay close attention to the awarenesses around you and to the awarenesses part on display because that's going to be everything.
as we are reaching this uh, tipping point, it, that also means that more and more people are feeling what they have been blocking off for a long time. And so there's going to be a lot of chaos and frustration and anger and suicides. There's going to be a lot of suicides. There already has been an, a great uptick in suicides. That doesn't necessarily just mean that people are mentally dis uh, unstable. Yes, to some degree, but that also means that people are feeling on deep levels and that they uh, cannot handle that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are weak, either. It just means that they've had enough. <sighs> Alright. Let's see, let's see how I can do this, so that... Not completely. Hmm. It's going to be too much. Okay, I'm just gonna start start at this place here. What must be on earth is goodness. Six hours later, speaking at an expanded session of the Russian Security Council, the gray haired chairman said Everything in the world is relative relative to our generation. The new one is akin to God's. We must come even with it, not it with us. All the military might of the planet, with its unique technical achievements, proved powerless before this one little girl of the new generation. Our task, our duty, and our obligation before this new generation is to clear away the trash we must apply we must apply all our efforts towards clearing the earth of all weaponry our our technical achievements and the discoveries embodied in the most modern and as we thought, unique military complexes turned out to be unnecessary junk in the face of the new generation, and we have to clear it away. Okay, and just a little preface there uh, for the story is that the new generation. was fed up, it, it got um, fed up with the 
dissociation, the dizziness that happened, uh, the disconnect with parent and child. And so that child in particular took a hard look at what their parent was so focused upon. And then they decided to, you know, disintegrate it, destroy it. Well, that parent just so happened to be uh, involved with, you know, military weaponry. And so, from this cascade that happened, from, from the child choosing to disintegrate this uh, weaponry uh, that had a trickle-down effect. A, a f the, the fear virus uh, literally flipped in on itself. And became the, uh, the opening for the new awareness to, to really have an opportunity to flower and come forth and spring into a, a lasting growth. So like uh, just just with this craziness uh, that we're go that's going on, uh, that, so it's another level. Like uh, a lot of us wouldn't have thought that it, it would have got to this extreme. Um, we're gonna see the flip side of this, to where you know, um, so so many people are worried about um, having their firearms taken away. Uh, think about that um just how crazy it would be that they are throwing their firearms away at will because uh it's just like with the fucking teepee all right this is the teepee effect here people are going to be led to believe that they have to throw them away otherwise you know they're at risk but but this is actually factual though this time it's going to be not necessarily that they're going to be at risk, but just that, you know, the initial onset of this was very factual and very real. But then, you know, once again, we're going to have an effect happen that's, you know, overplayed. But and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, get, getting rid of these, um, at least a portion of these artificial... programs an international conference was held for the security councils of the military blocks of different countries and continents there plans were worked out for the emergency recycling of military equipment and ammunition Scientists from different countries exchange their experience in recycling technologies. Psychologists spoke constantly in the media, trying to avert a panic among the populace, which owned various types of firearms. Panic arose after news of the Russian phenomenon was leaked to the media. The facts were somewhat distorted. Several Western news sources spoke about how Russia was recycling the ammunition on its territory on an emergency basis and was preparing an X hour to blow up the military reserves of other countries, destroying in the process the majority of the population. People started throwing the firearms and ammunition 
they had into the rivers and burying them in wastelands because official recycling depots could not accept them from those who wanted to turn them in. So, I mean, that sounds like insane, right? That sounds insane, especially from all these, you know, people that are so, you know, caught up with, oh, they're not going to take our guns. It sounds, it sounds crazy, right? Yeah. Well, aren't, aren't where are we at right now it's fucking equally crazy? Well, yeah. Fines were set for unauthorized recycling. Hmm. Middleman firms took a large payment for accepting each cartridge. But this did not stop those who wanted who wanted to form to who wanted to from getting rid of what presented a threat to the lives of entire families. Ah how very familiar. The people of the cities located close to military bases demanded that the authorities immediately eliminate military sites. But the defense industry which had been refocused to recycle what it had previously produced, was working at the limit of its capacity as it was. The press of many Western countries began to spread more and more rumors about how Russia was threatening the world with disaster. The world could not get rid of its accumulated weapons and many enterprises recycling military arms and ammunition. <sighs> Fuck. It's hard doing this one handed. <laughs> Just one second. <sighs> of course, so of course it's that page. Hey. Hey. Got it. Oh man, my hand is getting fatigued. There we go. They cannot destroy the weapons produced over decades in just a few months. The Russian government was accused of allegedly knowing for a long time about these unusual children and of preparing them well beforehand to recycle lethal weapons. To confirm these rumors, the fact was cited that the Russian government had engaged in buying up and dis disassembling ecologically unreliable enterprises, not only in its own country, but those in countries close to Russia's borders. If Russia was the first to clear its territory of explosive weapons, it would have the opportunity to destroy countries lagging in this disarmament, disarmament race. Isn't that crazy? Disarmament race. Uh, 
they intentionally exaggerated all the possible devastation and consequences of a world catastrophe. Firms that recycled ammunition found this very profitable since the price for their services rose. For example, someone turning in gun cartridges for recycling had to pay $20 per cartridge. Unauthorized burial or disposal of a weapon was viewed as an act of sabotage. Panic was also mounting because no one could propose effective protection from the powers discovered in Russian children. The Russian president agreed to what everyone then thought to be a, a desperate and ill-considered step. He decided to appear live on air over all channels of the world television, surrounded by children with unusual abilities. When the day and time of the Russian pres president's live appearance was announced, nearly the entire population of the planet gathered by their television screens. Just ahead of this hour, many enterprises stopped work, stores closed, and the streets were deserted. People awaited the news from Russia. The Russian president wanted to use his appearance to reassure people and to show the whole world that the generation of Russians being born were not bloodthirsty monsters, but good, ordinary children, and there was no need to fear them. In order to be more convincing, the Russian president asked his assistants to assemble in his office about 30 children with unusual abilities and decided to remain alone in the office with those children. Everything was done in just this way. What did the Russian president tell the world community? If you like, you can see this scene for yourself and hear what was said. Russia's president stood at a small podium next to his desk. Children of different ages from about 3 to 10 sat on little chairs on either side of the podium. Near the, near the opposite wall of the office were journalists with television cameras. The pres president began to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, I have invited you especially to meet the children. As you yourself will be convinced, I am in this office with them, alone, without a guard, psychologists, or parents. These children are not the monsters m many media in the West have attempted to portray. You yourselves can see that these are ordinary children. Their faces and actions show no signs of aggressiveness. We consider some of their abilities unusual. But is that in fact the case? The abilities that have begun to be discovered in the new generation may be ordinary for the human individual, what may be unusual and unacceptable. For the human existence, are our creations. The human community has created a system of communications and military potential capable of leading our planet to catastrophe. Over the centuries, Peace talks have been held between the states with the greatest military power, but the arms race has not stopped. Today, there is a real opportunity 
to put an end to this endless, destructive process. Right now, those countries where lethal weapons are not concentrated are in the most advantageous position. For us, this position appears unnatural. But let's think hard about why we so deeply believe that the production of lethal weaponry threatening entire nations with man's annihilation is natural. The new generation has changed its priorities and forced us to move in the opposite direction to disarm. The fear, panic, and fevered actions that are accompanying this process have been created largely thanks to the distortions of the news. The Russian government has been accused of long knowing about the appearance in its country of children with unusual abilities. These accusations are groundless. Russia still has a lot of military power potential. And like many countries, we are doing everything possible to recycle it. The Russian government has been accused of not trying to discover all the children with unusual abilities and not taking actions to isolate them, which implies a forcible hypnotism until the disarmament process is complete. The Russian government will not agree to this step. Russia's children are full-fledged citizens of the country. Let us think about this de desire to isolate those who do not accept the weapons of murder rather than those who produce them. The Russian government is taking measures to avert an accidental emotional outburst among children capable of sending an impulse and blowing up a type of weapon they dislike. Films displaying killing weapons have been completely banned from Russian television channels. Toys that imitate weapons have been destroyed. Their parents are by their children's side constantly and try and try to ward off their negative reaction. Russia. The president broke off his speech. A tow-headed boy of five or so stood up and walked toward a tripod supporting a video camera. First, he simply examined the tripod screws, and when he grabbed them, the operator abandoned his camera and retreated behind the journalists' backs in fright. The president quickly walked up to the boy who had frightened the cameraman, took his hand, and led him to the chair, where he had been sitting quietly before, murmuring as they went, Please, so quietly until I finish. but he was unable to continue his speech. Two children of three or four were doing something with the communications equipment near the desk. The children, who had been sitting quietly since the beginning of the speech, scattered through the office and did different things. Only the other children, and there were very few of them, sat in their place examining the journalists and television cameras. Among them was a girl with ribbons in her braids, and I recognized her, Dasha, who had blown up modern missile ex complexes, assessing what was going on in a very unchildishly intelligent and careful way was observing the journalist's reactions. 
People glued to their television screens all over the world saw the Russian president's slightly distraught face. He looked at the children scattered through his office. He saw two children doing something with the government cameras and looked at it. And looked at the door outside of which his assist assistants and he had invited children's parents were, but did not call to anyone for help. The president apologized for his interrupted speech, quickly walked up to two children who were dragging one of the devices off his desk, picked them up under, under their arms and said, These are not your toys. One of the boys who found himself behind, held up by the president, saw his pal hanging from the president president's other side and laughed gaily. The second child, squirming, tugged on the president's tie and said, They are! That's what you think, but they aren't. The toys, the smiling child repeated merely. The president saw a few more children affected by the blinking colored lights. Alright, let me plug this phone in before it dies. Telling me it's gonna die. And importantly, economic growth. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> much amusement, much interruption, but the president saw a few more children attracted by the blinking colored lights and sound walk up and start touching the telephone receivers. Then he put the two fidgeters down on the floor, walked quickly to his desk, pressed the button, and said, immediately turn off all communications in my office. Then he quickly spread out blank pieces of paper on his desk. He put a pencil or pen on each and said, turning to the kids crowding around him. Here you go. You can draw whatever you want. Draw, and then we'll all look and see who's turned out the best. The children surrounded the desk to take paper and pencil or pens. The shorter ones couldn't reach the desk. So the president began pulling up chairs and sitting or standing the little ones on the chairs. Convinced that he had distracted the children from drawing, withdrawing, the president once again walked up to his podium, smiled at the television viewers, gathered air into his lungs, intended to continue his speech, and couldn't. A little boy walked up to him and started tugging on his trousers. What's this? What do you need? P, the child said. What? Pee. Pee pee. You mean you need to go to the bathroom? And the president looked at the office door again. The door opened and two of the president's assistants or guards quickly rushed to him. 
one of the men with a stern and somewhat tense face leaned over and took the child by the hand but the child not letting go of the president's trouser leg squirmed away jerked his hand out of that of the stern man and pulling him out of the office and made a gesture of protest toward the other man approaching the men who had come in were at a loss the child raised his little face again and looking up at the president tugged at his trousers again and said Pete and he squatted a little you've picked a bad time with your pee and you're also very hard to please the president said quickly picking the child up in his arms and apologizing to the journalist and heading to the door saying as he went we'll be quick and he walked out on the screens of hundreds of millions of televisions the tele television cameras showed the children playing drawing and talking to each other most often they showed the president's podium where no one stood and then little Dasha rose from her seat she took her chair dragged it to the presidential podium and climbed on the chair looked at, looked at the journalists and into the camera lenses aimed at her straightened the bows on her braids and began to speak my name is Dasha our president is a nice man he'll be right back he'll be back and he'll tell you everything he's a little nervous but he'll be able to tell everyone how good it's going to be everywhere on earth and that no one should be afraid of us my brother Kostya told me that people are afraid of us children now because I blew up the big missile I didn't just want to blow them up I wanted to keep my papa from leaving us for a long times and for my papa not to think so much about these missiles and not to look at them he should look at He should look at Mama. She's better than all the missiles. She's so happy. When Papa looks at her and talks to her. But when he goes away for long times or looks at missiles, Mama is sad. And I don't want Mama to be sad. Kosia, my brother, is very smart and sensible. And Kostya says, I've scared lots of people. I won't blow anything up anymore. That's not interesting at all. There are other things to do that are very important and interesting. They will bring joy to everyone. And you will take apart the missiles yourselves so that no one can ever blow them up. Please don't be afraid of us. Come visit us, all of you will give you all life-giving water to drink. My mama told me how people here used to live. They went about their business, built different factories and plants, and got so carried away that all of a sudden there was no life-giving water left. The water got dirty, and they only sold water in bottles and stores but the water in bottles is dead, suffocated, and people started getting sick. That was how it used to be. But I just couldn't imagine how people could pollute the water they themselves were drinking. But my papa said that even now on earth, there were whole countries where there wasn't any anything living. I'm sorry, where there wasn't any living clean water and people in those countries were dying from agonizing diseases. They aren't, there aren't any apples in those countries or delicious berries. 
because everything living is sick, and a person who eats something sick suffers. You should come. You should come visit us all. Come visit, and we'll treat you to apples that aren't sick, and tomatoes and pears and berries. You'll try them, and when you go home, you'll tell yourselves, "We shouldn't pollute." It's better to live in clean, clean, cleanliness than when you have everything clean. We'll come visit you with presents. The president, who had returned carrying a little boy, was standing in the door and listening to Dasha speak. And when she fell silent, he walked up to the podium, still holding the child, who was comfortable in his arms, and added, "Yes." Of course. You should come, indeed. You can heal your flesh here, but this is not the main thing. More important is that for us all to understand ourselves and our purpose, we must understand this, so we aren't cleared off the face of the earth like trash. Together, we must all clean up after ourselves, clear away the dirt we've created. Thank you all for your attention. The scene in the president's office diminished, and Anastasia's voice continued. It's hard to say whether the president's speech or little Dasha's had an influence on the people listening to the live broadcast from Russia, but people didn't want to believe the rumors being spread about Russia's aggressiveness anymore. People wanted to live, and to live happily, and they believed in that possibility. Those wanting to visit Russia and spend time there increased many times after the direct broadcast from the Kremlin. Those who returned from Russia could no longer live their former life, and awareness blazed up in each of them. Like the first ray of the sun, the morning's dawn. So I'm gonna end that there. Uh, this awareness has already, you know, been spreading here. So uh, if you don't know about this, uh, yeah. All I offer is reminders and resonance and reassurance that what you feel inside is real. So uh, continue that process. And continue engaging and feeling into the real and allowing that to lead you back into a natural homeostasis and balance and a new world and a new dream and what that looks like and that we can all create this together. Peace.